I wanted to talk about another situation today that's a local situation that uh, involves a couple brothers called the Bartholomew brothers. And they are a couple fellows. Uh, they, they weren't out with the uh, Occupy Wall Street group. These guys are college graduates that actually work for a living. Their dad is in the military, is in the U2 program. Their, their mother's a teacher. And, but they are, are into uh, standing up for the rights that our forefathers uh, all the way back to the beginning fought for and that our fathers have fought for in World War II and Vietnam and other wars. And they fought for these rights that many of us today, we couldn't even quote them. And uh, in fact, when you talk about the rights to carry a weapon or the right to protest or the right to free speech, some people actually think uh, you're out of line, but they're actually uh, their rights that that were given to us uh, and cost many people their lives. And so, uh, in April, these brothers were arrested by the Yuba County Sheriff's Department for standing on the Earl Road overpass, which is a public area. It's got a sidewalk over it, and they were holding a large sign that said "Taxes Equal Theft." And if you think, oh, well, that's, they shouldn't have been standing up there. Well, really, it's none of your business because people can stand around wherever they want. We've had life chains where we've had thousands of people stand along the sides of Calusa Hi Highway and, and the 10th Street and E Street and hold signs that had to do with uh, our opposition uh, to abortion. And people have a right to stand up. You'll see people stand along the bridge, the 10th Street Bridge, telling you to vote or to vote a certain way. They don't get arrested. They don't have to go out and get a permit. They just stand up and do that. Recently, we had a uh, uh, an effort to get people to sign a petition for SB 48. And it was raining, and I talked to the city of Marysville. They said, you don't need a permit. Just don't drive up on Washington Square lawn with your vehicles as long as you're just going to be out there. No big deal. So there's a lot of freedom in the United States. So when these guys were standing up there holding a sign, uh, they weren't doing anything wrong. They were Whether you agree with what they were saying has nothing to do with it. Whether you believe taxes indeed equals theft doesn't have anything to do with it. They happen to be wearing uh, a uh, a masks. Now you think, oh, well, it's illegal to wear a mask. Well, it isn't illegal. Your kids probably wear one at Halloween, and there's no exemption for Halloween. So people can wear masks. They just can't wear a mask when they're committing a crime. So uh, they wore a mask. And uh, the other thing is it's interesting is most of you think, oh, I have to, I can't go outside the house unless I have ID in, the po in my pocket, like a, a driver's license or an official DMV ID. You can. You could just have your bathing suit on and walk around town. You don't have to have an ID. And so, you know, a lot of people don't realize these things. But so when they were interviewed by the law enforcement, and asked about an ID. They said, well, why, sh why do we have to give you an ID? Are you arresting me? Anyway, you can watch this uh, when this entire arrest, you can watch this uh, on uh, the, the Internet by, by going to goo.gl backslash G4 capital N small F capital E. That's G O O dot gl backslash g four the number four capital n small f capital e and you can go and you can actually watch an arrest taking place now here's the deal they are they are uh they've been going through the criminal justice system and they were arrested uh let me just read their uh, news release. On Tuesday, November 29th, Wheatland residents Benjamin and Russell both Bartholomew will finally have their day in court. Actually, now that's been moved to early December, uh, I believe December 2nd, uh, to respond to charges stemming from their tax protests last spring. Uh, the district attorney dropped the mask wearing charge, but the brothers are still being charged with violating penal section 602F, in other words, illegally posting a sign. In other words, uh, if you hold up a sign now, the district attorney is saying, somewhere in town, they could actually, if they don't like what it says, or they don't like something you're doing, they can, they can charge you with this. And Penal Code 148A1, obstructing a police officer while attempting to discharge his or her duties. I guess that means if you don't agree with the police officer, that's obstructing, even though you weren't committing a crime. 
So each, each of these fellows is facing a possible $2,000 fine and two years in jail. Now it's interesting, the Territorial Dispatch in their last uh, edition, they compared uh, the pursuing of this case against the Bartholomew brothers with a case that they decided not to pursue because they didn't think it was serious enough, even though the Fair Political Practices Commission felt there were at least four violations, I think, uh, of Supervisor of Yuba County, Hal Stalker. He, he is a supervisor, I believe it's in the 5th District in the Foothills. But he uh, was uh, found that by the Fair Political Practices Commission and Yuba County Sheriff's Department that he violated four uh, elections violations. Now it's interesting uh, because in that election there were four or five people running and he avoided a runoff by four votes. Now you wonder if a guy, uh, whether he gained any momentum off these violations that he was found uh, in a sense guilty of or cited for or or uh, noted for but the district attorney Pat McGrath found that uh, it wasn't going to be worth it to prosecute him now that's the privilege or the prerogative of the district attorney of any county uh, while being a chaplain for Marysville police for a dozen years there were a number of times police officers and I got into a discussion about them making an arrest or citing someone and the DA didn't press the charges. In other words, the DA has a prerogative of looking at the police report and dropping the case and not pursuing it. So the guy was arrested, maybe got arrested and bailed out or was cited and released and was going to have a court date and then they just cancel it and drop the charges. And that happens all the time. And so that's the prerogative of the, plea, of the uh, DA, district attorney, to determine whether law enforcement has enough evidence or there's significant enough evidence to go to court and get a conviction. So in the situation of Hal Stalker, uh, Pat McGrath felt it was uh, not going to be significant enough, that the, the crimes weren't significant enough, uh, and, and he didn't think he was going to be able to find a jury that would be... Uh, unbiased, I guess, to make a, a judgment on this politically charged issue. However, now we're pursuing, I mean, how many, how many dollars are we going to pursue, uh, spend to pursue these two brothers who stood up and held a sign? Now, for instance, if these guys are found guilty, uh, which I don't believe they will, they're going to go to a jury trial. I can't imagine a jury finding these guys guilty. But if they're going to push this and harass these guys for now it's been since April, they confiscated their phones and their cameras, uh, how many other people are going to have the confidence to go out if they feel they disagree with something that the City Council of Marysville or Yuba City or the Board of Supervisors does? How many of them would stand up on that Earl Road overpass and hold a sign up anymore? Uh, do you think our, our liberties and our freedoms have been curtailed because of, of the, even if they don't even go to trial and get a decision, the harassment, these guys actually got, uh, I'm not sure how long they spent in jail, but, uh, or whether they were just brought there, cited and released, but the fact that all that, they've been through all this, they've now hired an attorney. How many of you, the next time you decide, I'm going to stand up for something, and will you remember the Bartholomew brothers and the fact that they got jacked around? Uh, by the system here, how many of you will stand up and hold up a sign? Like the other day, we had a and uh, you know an, uh, an anti SB 48 sign we held up. Well, they didn't arrest us, and Marysville Police Department didn't arrest us, and we were right there on 10th Street. Mm. Uh, so it's interesting, at, you know, when when are they going to put pressure on, and when are they not? But somebody, I don't know who phoned in that day on Highway 70 as it goes under Earl Road overpass. You can listen to the dialogue between the, the police officers or sheriff's department. It looked like maybe a highway patrolman there and the, and the young men. But the fact is, you know, I know, I recognize some of those officers that are deputies. They're, they're great deputies. I've worked with them multiple times. They care about the community. They're committed. They're people of integrity. It looked to me like they were very awkward in that situation. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what crime. Uh, I don't know what pressure was being put on to remove these guys from the overpass, but it seemed like the deputies were genuinely uh, frustrated 
was what to do if anything and uh, at one point I thought maybe they were just going to walk off and let them be which they should have but anyway here we are they've now we we're in the system and uh, we'll see what Pat McGrath is going to do about it the title of this article in the last territorial dispatch is in the interest of justice and the subtitle is Yuba County DA prosecutes brothers for protesting tax policy but gives politician a pass so uh, you know I think it was a, a great article that the territorial ran I think that's what a newspaper is all about when I talk when I think about the free press in the United States and how important it is the importance isn't just to do a he said she said but the importance of a free press is to tell stories what's the story behind the story and uh, I'm thankful that John Missler has the courage to run this and to uh, bring out not only what's going on with these young men but also uh, what has been going on with uh, Hal Stalker.